We have hit the two shower a day season here in Florida. And man, I'll tell you, think hot, times it by three, and then add that to a sauna. And that's just about what we have here lately. It has been wild. And the summer storms, golly, something to behold. And you might be wondering, are you still having fun? The answer is, oh my gosh, yes. If you're new here, welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want all the good stuff, you might want to sign up for my Sunday morning email newsletter. It comes out Sunday morning, clearly. The link is in the description box down below. Every Sunday morning, I send out a very short, very sweet email newsletter highlighting all the cool things I found throughout the week. Maybe it's a great sale. Maybe it's a great tip. Maybe it's something funny. Anything that I would tell you if you and I were out having lunch together like a couple of girlfriends, which we are. So the link is in the description box down below. I think you're going to love it. It's super short, super sweet, super free. It's a nice addition to your Sunday morning. So you might be wondering, is she still having fun in Florida? And the answer is, oh my gosh, yes, I am having a blast. I'm still having a blast. Let me just tell you what my life is like these days. I work out at the gym a few times. I lift weights about two to three times a week. I go to yoga. I went to watercolor class yesterday. I started my career as a dragon boat racer, which is super, super fun. I've been kayaking. Oh my gosh. I swim laps in the evenings. I go to the pool almost every day. Lucy loves riding in the golf cart and she and I will often go up to the square to listen to the music in the evenings. She loves that because not only does she get to ride in the golf cart, but she gets to be petted and get lots of attention up at the square because, you know, she's a doodle and people love to pet the fluff. <laughs> I've been having so much fun and I'm still having so much fun. And the interesting thing is, is I had no idea how much there was to do in the state of Florida. I knew there was a lot of beaches and I knew this and that, but once I got here and I realized all the springs there are to kayak, all the places there are to go explore, I've just been having such a great time and I really haven't even left my neighborhood that much. Maybe I've traveled a half an hour or an hour to go kayaking somewhere, but there is so much left to explore. I can't imagine it's going to take me quite a while to really get to know the state and to do all the things that are on my to-do list. So yes, I'm still loving it here. I love my community. I live in the villages in Florida. If you haven't heard of it, it's like heaven. For someone who's older and active, it's a combination of summer camp and club mat. That's kind of what I've decided. And I just am having a ball. The people are so friendly. There's so much to do. There really is so much more to do than anyone could ever fit into a single lifetime, which I love because I like to keep busy and I like to do new things. And I've been having a great time. week <laughs> marks the start of the eighth month of my fitness journey and I thought I'd check in and just kind of let you guys know how it's going what I've learned any advice I can share or any experiences I can share that might be helpful to you just to recap I started on my fitness journey in December of 2022 so eight months ago at that time I was 168 pounds of just about pure fluff I really had not kept up with my fitness program. Now I'm 66. I had just turned 66 in December of last year. My birthday's at the end of November. And in my 50s, I was pretty doggone fit. I was hiking a lot, kayaking a lot. I lived up at Lake Tahoe, I was very, very active. What happened into my late 50s and early 60s is that I just lived in places or got into situations, lifestyle situations where I didn't have 
have the opportunity to do a lot of the outdoor things that I really enjoy doing and it just sort of compounded and I ended up getting fluffier and fluffier and fluffier and fluffier until I finally just decided that's it on December of last year and launched on a fitness program. 168 pounds at that point. Today I am a hundred and about 56 pounds and change. So a 12 pound loss on the scale. However, if you were to put Kimberly back then next to Kimberly today, there would be a bigger difference than just the 12 pounds because I put on a lot of muscle. Weight training has been a really important part of my fitness program. The same volume of muscle is going to weigh a whole lot more than the same volume of fat. <laughs> so people will say muscle weighs a whole lot more than fat. What they mean by that is that muscle takes up less space, weighs more than fat. So I probably look a lot less fluffy than 12 pounds would indicate just because I have more muscle on my body now than when I first started. I hope that makes sense. I was wearing probably a size 12 back then. I'm now wearing a size 8 in pants. And because I have sort of a fuller body shape on the bottom, pants are really where <laughs> I measure my fitness level or my health level, that sort of thing. How has it been for me? Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a thing. It has been a thing. It's not one of those fitness journeys where someone says, oh, I just stopped eating dessert a couple of nights a week and I walked for 20 minutes after dinner and I lost 25 pounds. <laughs> No, that is not how it's been for me. It has been hard won and I have pretty much focused on it for the last eight months. That has been the number one priority in my life is getting my fitness back. And I was so shocked and surprised when I did my before pictures to realize how unfit I look. What I found doing my research is that just like collagen that we lose in our skin that makes our skin look less plump and a little more wrinkly, we lose muscle year after year and particularly when we get into our 60s it starts dumping <laughs> like crazy so not only had I stopped doing all the things that were keeping me fit my body was producing a lot less muscle mass and I was losing muscle mass so it really does contribute to a loss of fitness and a loss of muscle mass as you get older I'm not really into regrets it's such a waste of time but I can tell you that I wish I would have known that in my late 50s I would have kept up with my fitness program on some level in a much more committed way I had no idea that it was going to be compounding with my lack of movement and weight bearing exercises and my body not producing as much muscle anymore and really shedding a lot of my skeletal muscle mass but here we are and I'm working hard at it. What can I say? It has been a journey and I did not start out fast. I really didn't. Gosh, in the very beginning, you guys, in December of last year and then January, just doing a little walking workout of 10, 15 minutes with just about my fitness level. That's all that I felt like I could really do in a day. And it has improved a little bit over time. What I can say now is I love working out. I really look forward to it. I love coming to the gym and weightlifting, it feels really, really good. The results that I've seen or the changes that I've seen are I'm a lot more energetic. My body just feels a lot more capable and a lot more balanced and just a lot more, I don't know, movement oriented. I just feel like I can do so much more. Another thing that's happened is that I've started craving movement or exercise. I pretty much have been lifting weights and then I'll swim laps some evenings and go to yoga. If I have a day or two that I don't do anything, my body starts wanting it. And that's such a great place to be in because it's easy for me to work out. Now I look forward to it. I think about my workouts before I get here. I try to do a little bit more than I did before. I try to lift a little heavier than I did before. It's just all coming together to now I really feel like I'm in the groove. I'm excited to work out. I'm loving it. I'm doing more and better every single time. Now that being said, there are some days where I'm just not in the mood. <laughs> I'm just not. But I find if I just get to the gym and start in, it generally works out just fine. My eating habits have changed as well and I've kind of documented that over the last several months. I've really cut down on carbs. I don't keep sugar in my house. Every now and again I'll have a treat when I'm out, but when I'm at home, I'm pretty much focusing on protein and low carbohydrate vegetables and 
and fruits. I eat a lot of berries. I have cut dairy out of my diet. It just ended up working for me and I dropped, gosh, probably eight or nine pounds right away when I got the dairy out of my diet. The rest of the weight has come off reluctantly, but a little bit at a time. As for successes, I do feel like I've had some successes. First off, when I first started weight training, I was bicep curling eight pounds. I'm now bicep curling 20 pounds, which I'm extremely proud of, ridiculously proud of. And it's so funny, I had just moved up to 15 pounds a few weeks ago, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try 20 about a week or two, maybe two weeks ago. I'm gonna try 20 and now the 15s feel light. So it's really been nice to see the increase in my strength and mobility. That's been fun. Another thing I've added that I feel like is a huge win is I've started working on pull-ups. There is an assist machine here at the gym where it assists you with the pull-ups. And I really have a goal of wanting to get a really strong pull-up unassisted at some point. And I'll let you guys know when that happens. So what can I say in general? Don't think that I shot out of the gate doing great and lifting weights and being excited and all that. I didn't. I really, really didn't. I started slow and it was the kind of thing that I felt like was kind of slugging through mud. You know, I wasn't really clicking or getting excited or motivated, but it got a little bit better every week, every week, every week. One thing I knew for sure is I didn't want to go backwards. I don't want to get unfit again. It's just not fun. It doesn't feel good it's not healthy it doesn't support the kind of lifestyle I'm interested in having so I knew going backward was not an option so I had to keep moving forward it didn't really start clicking into where I was feeling motivated and wanting to go do it and energetic for probably four and a half to five months. Now I'm just starting month eight and oh my gosh the difference in how I feel is tremendous the sense of movement and ability and strength I have. It's improved my coordination and my balance. I just feel overall so much better and I can't think of a single negative from this whole fitness journey that I've been on. I am very excited to see where I'm going to be at the one year mark. That's kind of my big first goal is the one year goal. But one thing that I have learned from all my investigation and my friend Connie, who's a nutritionist, she's helping me with my diet and other things like that. She said to me, you know, give it a year. And I was really frustrated probably around the six month mark because I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. She tweaked a few things for me. Things started really shifting and she's just like, give it a year. It is much slower at this age because of that loss of muscle, because our body is not producing the same amount of muscle or supporting that muscle mass anymore. It's doing other things. I don't know. Maybe it's out the lot. needs to get back online here. So it's just taking a lot longer. Plus, I am very careful not to injure myself. I always lift in a way that is very protective of my joints and my muscles because I know if I get an injury, oh my gosh, it's going to set me back weeks and I have no desire to do that. So I'm very careful when I'm lifting. I'm smart about how I'm moving my body and I really try to take care of my body so I don't have to deal with any type of injury. So here we are. We're at the start of month eight. I'm loving working out. I'm loving all the physical things I'm doing. My body feels so much better. And what I can say to you is that if you're just starting or if you're just thinking about starting, oh my gosh, I hope you do it. I really hope you do it because if you stick with it by month five or month six, you're going to look back and say, oh golly, I'm moving forward. This feels so much better than where I was. And I know that's definitely the case for me. And you know, in the long Long run the fact that I lost my fitness in the last several years might end up being a really good thing because I am so much more determined to get to a much higher fitness level than I probably would have if I just kept sort of piddling along how I was doing my fitness goals now are much much higher and I know that's gonna serve me really well as I get into my 70s and into my 80s and beyond so for me it's been a wonderful journey it has not been easy it's been hard Hard one but right now where I am right now starting the eighth month I'm so excited I'm so motivated I'm so looking forward to every workout and all the things I'm doing to support my fitness level so stick with it you will get to the point 
where you're excited about it and you can't wait to move your body and help your body be stronger and leaner and support you better as you grow older. I just got out of the shower. <laughs> went to the gym earlier this morning and I'm heading off to my watercolor class and I thought I would show you guys how I'm not getting ready <laughs> these days. I just am not wearing much makeup because it's so casual here and it's very, very hot. I would say that I maybe wear a full face of makeup three or four times a month. It really just doesn't happen that often. There's just a lot going on and there's not much room for a full face of makeup. Every now and then I'll do it when I'm going out in the evenings or if there's something special happening, but mostly this is how I get ready in the morning. Have my skincare all done and it has had an opportunity to absorb into my skin. The first thing I'm gonna start with is my Lumify eye whitening drops because as we get a little older, our eyes are not as white and clear as they used to be. If you look at younger people, the whites of their eyes is just so very pretty. It's almost that blue white. It's really gorgeous. This really cleans up my eyes and helps them to look bright and white. And so I'll just put a drop of that into my eye. And I do want to let you know that I have my contacts in right now and you can use this with contacts. It's very safe. I haven't heard anybody having trouble with it at all. You can get it on Amazon. I'll have it linked below if you're interested. If you feel like the whites of your eyes are not as white as they could be. The next thing I'm going to do is tame my eyebrows. I happen to have long eyebrows. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and I can look like Carl Malden, you know, with all these hairs going everywhere. So laying them down and getting them to stay in place is something that's important to me because I don't want to look goofy all day long with my eyebrows going everywhere. I've been using this Benefit Brow Setter and I'd love to give you the actual name, but I can hardly even read it. <laughs> It says brow setter. Not very creative there, but brow setter from Benefit. It really does put your eyebrows down like you hairsprayed them. So I'm just going to comb that gel through my brows and kind of get them to lay down how I'd like them. And by golly, they're going to stay exactly where I put them until, you know, I wash my face in the evening. So get my brows set down so I have the whites of my eyes addressed. My eyes look a little clearer. They will in a minute or two. My brows are laid down. The next thing I do is I'm going to take my Jones Road correcting pencil. The reason I'm using this instead of one of my concealers, and I have a ton of concealers here, you know, the liquid concealers, is this is stiffer because I wanted to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to take that and I'm going to run that right in that real dark area underneath my eye in that little ridge there and then a little bit under my eye to kind of counteract that purple area and then if there's any little spots on my face I'll just kind of dot it around and then just take my finger and blend it in. It really is not <laughs> much care that I'm putting on my complexion. Then I'm going to take my finger and just tap that pencil in and the reason I'm doing this first and you're going to see what's going to come next is because this formula is stiffer. It's not going to move around as much and the nice thing about these pencils and you guys know I'm not a real big fan of the Jones Road makeup line. There are a few products that I think are good. I do really like these pencils. I don't know that they're better than other pencils you can get for a lesser price but I can say I do really like them. Once I have that concealer pencil all tapped in, I'm going to take my Catrice Under Eye Brightener. This is an exact dupe, in my mind, to the Beauty Pie Under Eye Genius. They are just so similar. And if somebody gave me two containers without the labeling on it and asked me to pick which one is which, I'm not sure that I'd be able to figure out which one was which. That's how close they are. So today I'm gonna use the Catrice Under Eye Brightener. This is very affordable. I think it's around $6. I'm gonna get a little bit on my ring finger right here, and I'm gonna tap that underneath my eyes and kind to really work it into that pencil. All I'm doing is trying to address the under eye darkening that I have. So my eyes look a little bit fresher and a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to work that in. This is light and it does hydrate and give a little bit of luminosity to that area. So I'm going to pretty much tap it in like this and it's going to continue to absorb into my skin as I do the rest of what I'm doing to my face. Next up, I'm going to curl my eyelashes. This is my Refer Eyelash Curler. I love it. It really is worth it. 
<laughs> I spent many decades using drugstore eyelash curlers. I'll never go back. Curled both my lashes now, and then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to tight line my upper lashes. So I'm gonna take, this is the Milani Stay Put Eyeliner, and I'm gonna go right at the base of my lashes, focusing on the area in between each one of those lashes instead of on the skin. So that's pretty much all the makeup I'm gonna put on other than lipstick. I have addressed my flyaway eyebrows. The whites of my eyes are looking clearer and cleaner. I've given some emphasis to my eyes with that tight lining and curling my lashes, and I've addressed that purple circle area underneath my eyes. Now I'm gonna put on lipstick and that's gonna be it for the day. For lipstick, I'm gonna use an NYX lip liner. This is in the color Whipped Caviar. I'll go ahead and put that on the back of my hand. You can see it here. And then I'm gonna be using a City Beauty City Lips Gloss. This is their plumping lip gloss. This is in the color San Diego. And you're gonna see what a pretty combination it is. So there's the lip liner and the lipstick. As I'm lining my lips, I always line on the outside edge to make my lips look a little bit fuller and a little bit plumper. And then I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit and blend it with my finger. And then the San Diego. This has a really pretty gold reflect in it. I styled my hair with my Revlon One Step after I got out of the shower. I just sectioned it off. You guys know how I do it. Curled it under, gave it a little bit of fullness, and this is it for the day. <laughs> Things around here are so casual and I'm loving it. So this is my easy, everyday, no makeup. Seriously, no makeup look. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you will know that I have spent an inordinate amount of time recently complaining about my neck. It just didn't seem to be responding as well as the skin on my face to my skincare routine. I've been whining, yada, 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 this and that. Here's the problem, there's the problem. It's just been an ongoing thing with me. I thought it would be a good idea for me to address what's going on with my neck, what I've done with my neck, and some good information and good tips and tricks for you in your own journey to keep your neck looking as youthful at this age as possible. I've been on my skincare journey for about four years now and I want to make sure that you're clear I am not in any way professional in this area. I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not an esthetician, I have absolutely no medical background in skincare. What I have done is addressed my own skin for the past four years, learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes, Mistakes, found some things that worked and that's what I'm going to be sharing today. In addition, it's going to be a little long-winded because after four years, I do have some things to say about skin and how we can manage our skin to help it stay youthful and fresh and bouncy and plump for as long as possible. So if you're not into skincare and if you don't care about neck stuff, <laughs> this might not be for you. But if this is a hot topic for you, I'm really going to do a deep dive and try to cover every single thing that I can think of that I've tried for my neck and my thoughts about it and if I would really suggest it and recommend it. I'm going to list in order of importance of what I think really made the biggest difference in the skin on my neck. First I want to share that I fell into the same trap that I caution you guys not to fall into and that was I didn't access the pictures of my before situation and compared them to today. So I wanna go ahead and throw up a picture that I came across of when I very first started my skincare routine. Here we are. <laughs> And you know what? When I look at the picture, I realize how far I've come. I had no idea because it's been a few years now what my neck looked like and how much improvement I have made in my neck. Although my neck does not look great today, it looks okay. It looks a whole lot better than it did. I mean, let me show you the side view of my neck. And you guys can see, if, I, if you watch my videos every week, you know what my neck looks like. It looks so much better than it did. And I had forgotten what it had looked like when I very first started, hence the whining and complaining, because I kept thinking, 
I wasn't making any progress or I wasn't getting anywhere. Well, you can see very clearly that I have made a lot of progress and I have improved the look and the contour of my neck a lot since I started on this journey. What I'm gonna do now is list in the order of what I feel are the important steps that got me here. Some of them you're gonna love hearing, some of them you might love, some of them you might not love hearing, but this has really been my experience. So first off, take pictures. <laughs> like I did, but I didn't look at them. You will be surprised if you take pictures how much progress you're going to be making over the months and year. What happens with skincare is nothing dramatic happens overnight, nothing. Trust me on that. You do not wake up in the morning and think, oh my gosh, I'm fixed. It doesn't happen that way. It happens in very, very small incremental changes and they're so subtle that you can't see them from day to day. It's only those pictures that are going to give you a good idea of how far you've come. Now, a couple of comments I wanna make. I have people tell me all the time, I've been doing this for six months, I've been doing this for eight months and there's no difference, no changes. And I'm like, well, okay. I don't really believe them because I know how subtle the changes are with skincare that if you're just looking in the mirror every day you're not going to see them and you're not going to think you're getting anywhere so the before pictures are what's really going to keep you excited and motivated to stick with the routine and here's another trick don't just take a photo take video as well. And I want you to be talking in the video. Maybe you say a poem, maybe you say the lyrics to a song that you love, something so that your skin is actually moving on your face so you can see how the skin moves. Skin that is plumper and firmer looks different when you're talking than skin that is lacking elasticity and is really kind of getting very wrinkly and without a lot of firmness to it. So make sure that you not only take photos, but you take video and you'll be so happy. You'll be messaging me in several months and saying, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I did that because I can really see the difference now. Let's go ahead and hop into what I think has really made the difference in my neck. And this is four years of me doing a lot of different things, testing and trying products, testing and trying lifestyle changes to really come to kind of an understanding of what's going on with my body, what's going on with my skin. So the very first thing in the top of the list is diet and exercise. And I know if you're anything like me, you just groaned. I know that because that's certainly what I would have done before I went on this journey. I don't want you to tell me that I've got to do all these lifestyle changes. I want you to give me a pill or a cream or a device that's going to fix it overnight, preferably. Really, that's where I was. I didn't want to have to go through a lot of rigmarole, but you know what? The rigmarole or the changes in my lifestyle are what really has made, I think, one of the biggest differences in my neck and my body overall. When you're talking about diet, I want to show you a picture of me. This is about five years ago before I started on my skincare journey when my diet was very different. I wasn't exercising regularly and you're going to be able to see it. So let's go ahead and take a look at five years ago. This picture clearly is not flattering of me. It's not good lighting. It's not a good angle. But despite all of that, you can see the difference in my skin and in my face and the amount of puffiness in my face. The inflammation that I was walking around with was extraordinary and I didn't realize it was there. I just thought I was fluffed. Remember, this is five years ago. I think that I look younger and healthier today than I do in that picture. And a lot of it has to do with the difference in my diet. I no longer eat processed foods. I don't eat seed oils, which are highly inflammatory. I just don't eat a lot of stuff that I probably was eating back then, most likely, you know, like hand me the Doritos. <laughs> And I just don't eat those things anymore and it really does show in my face. First of all, look at the amount of puffiness underneath my eyes in that photo. It's extraordinary. And also the puffiness all over my whole face. When we eat processed foods with highly inflammatory ingredients, guess what? We get 
all puffed up. And when I look around today at the population, mostly what I see are a whole lot of people walking around with a whole lot of inflammation. I want to let you know that I was not always on the good diet train. I am embarrassed to tell you that I used to eye roll at what I called the granola crowd. I mean, I was like, I don't want to hear it. You know, like, oh my gosh, I was obnoxious. Like, uh, you know, hand me the cookies. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I did not have much patience for that whole line of lifestyle changes. Today, I feel very, very differently. Why? Because I learned more. I saw what happened to my body when I started taking Ion Biome and really cut down the inflammation in my body and built up my microbiome. It is extraordinary the changes that I saw and they happened so very quickly that I am a true believer now. And I didn't start here. So if you're not there yet, if you do the eye roll thing, which I did, I'm right there with you. As you learn more and see the changes that will happen dramatically with your body when you change your diet, you might change your mind and decide it's worth it. I know I will never go back to eating foods that I know taste good because they have flavor enhancers that are meant to make you kind of addicted to that food. I don't do that anymore. I'm just off that whole train. I eat clean food. I eat good food. I eat healthy healthy food. I do as much as I can to feed my body instead of just feed my mouth with a whole bunch of stuff that's going to taste good and kind of, you know, put me in a little food coma. The second thing I want to talk about is exercise. And I know that if you're anything like me, you probably just groaned again. And I'm sorry about that, but that's the truth. I have seen such a difference in my body since I've really implemented a good fitness program for probably about the last six or seven months. It has been getting better and better all the time. And I know that that when I'm in the gym and I'm lifting things, I'm like, oh, straining with my neck. And I know it is really addressing the tightness and firmness of that muscular structure underneath my skin, making my neck look a lot firmer than it did before. If you do belong to a gym, I want you to go the next time and look for the women who are really fit who have great muscle tone and look at their neck. I have not seen a single woman in my gym and it's an older crowd where I live. I have not seen a single fit woman who has a problem with a double chin. Their necks are firm and tight. Maybe the skin is not as fresh and smooth as someone in their 40s, but definitely the tone of their neck is much different. And I know that from my own workout, when I'm doing something that's a full body exercise, my whole body is working and I can feel it in my neck, in my chest, in this whole area. So getting a clean diet and getting a fitness program on board is going to do so much for your neck and surprisingly I would put those two things at the very top of my list. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are devices. What devices do I think have done the most for my neck? Number one, without a doubt, no competition, nothing even comes close, is my red light panel. <laughs> And this sucker is heavy because mine is big. I feel like of all the devices I've used on my neck, this one really, really makes the difference. There's something about the red light that really energizes the skin and really creates a firmer, smoother look on your skin, both your face, your neck, down your chest, the whole thing. I have seen extraordinary changes in my neck from using my red light. And for me, it is hands down the most effective anti-aging device I have for my neck. And I'm not alone in this. There are a lot of other people who have said the red light has made a tremendous difference in the skin on their neck, in the firmness and the tightness. Now you might be saying, why a panel instead of a face unit? I have a strong opinion about this. To me, a panel just makes a whole lot more sense because it is so much more versatile than a face mask. And you know what? The panels, maybe not one this big, but they do have smaller panels, is going to be at about the same price point as a face mask, but you can do so much more with it. Red light is great for inflammation. It's great for sore muscles. It's great for cranky joints. You can move a panel around and put it on any area of your body. It's much harder to do that with a face mask. 
this is so much more useful. It's so much more of a better investment in my mind than a face mask. And my research have shown that a good panel is so much more powerful than what you're gonna get in a face mask. I love my red light panel. 10 minutes every day. And what I'll do often when I sit in front of it is I'll grab the bottom of it and tilt it up underneath my neck so that it hits my neck a little bit more strongly than it would if it was just sitting straight up and down. Mito, the company that I've been working with for a long, long time since I started using Red Light, I did a lot of research. They make great panels, strong output, at a great price point. So if you're looking at red lights, I highly recommend that you get a panel. I think you're gonna be really happy with the versatility. What about the other devices that I use on my face? Well, let's talk about them for neck application. First of all, this is the Nebulift. This is a radio frequency device and you can use it on your neck, although you don't wanna really use it over your thyroid area. So you can use it underneath your chin and down the sides of your neck. This will do a nice job of helping that skin to firm up and smooth out. Radio frequency for me has really made my skin plumper. That's the difference that I see with radio frequency. So definitely this can be used on the sides of your neck and underneath your chin. The Myolift, which I use, this is a microcurrent, and what microcurrent does is it lifts the muscles underneath your skin, so it gives you a lifted look. You can use this on your neck, and it's going to help to lift that area and make it look firmer and more toned. One of my favorite devices for the neck is the Nera Pro. This is a new device and you can see the head of this is much bigger than the original Nera Precision. The reason I like this for the neck is because it's a laser device. This is an FDA cleared at home laser device. It really does impact those lines on your skin and you can use this all over your neck area. I stay away from the thyroid area clearly. I like this because I can sit in the evenings with my neck is clean and dry and run this over my neck and I really don't have to look in the mirror. I can just feel my way. Because that head is bigger, I can cover a lot more territory more quickly. So it's a good choice for that. And I think over time, I'm going to see a reduction in what are called the necklace lines around the neck. So these three do have an application if you are already own them. If you don't own any devices and you just want to get one, I highly recommend the red light unit. It really is going to make a tremendous difference in the tone, texture, and firmness of your skin. Okay, so we've talked about diet and exercise. I know, grown city, I understand. <laughs> And we talked about devices. The thing with devices is they only work if you use them. They're not gonna work sitting in the drawer. So really make sure that you're committed if you're going to go ahead and purchase something that you're actually going to use it. Surprisingly, I have stayed incredibly consistent with all my skincare and my devices throughout the whole four years. And I am staying very, very consistent now with my diet and exercise. So it does require a commitment on your end. One of the things that I wanna address address now really quickly, and I know it's kind of a touchy subject, is how about plastic surgery? How about plastic surgery compared to at-home products and devices? That's such a good question, and here's my answer. And to be honest with you, I think everybody gets to choose what it is they want to do. I personally would never go get plastic surgery, particularly at this stage in my life. Why? I don't know, I'm just not really that interested in it. And to be honest with you, I think the results using at-home home choices end up looking better and more natural over time. So think about this. Think about a 1950s kitchen. I'll use myself as an analogy. And you know it needs to be updated. You look around, the cabinets are old, the appliances are old, everything's old, but you decide that you're going to change out the range because that's really, really bothering you. Well, you can change out the range or, you know, 
get an eye lift. Let's use that as the, you know, changing out the range, getting an eye lift. And what does it do? It addresses that one area. It doesn't address all the other areas, the cabinets, the refrigerator, the dishwasher, the sink, and everything else. And it ends up almost accentuating the other things because now it looks so fresh and new. I kind of think about that when I think about plastic surgery. Now, if it's a choice you make, I totally support you in that. I think we all need to do whatever it is we feel the most comfortable for ourselves. I've been really pleased with my at-home routine because I feel like everything has gotten better. It's all come up together and everything looks like it fits everything looks better, everything looks healthier. It's just a more cohesive look and something that I'm going to be able to maintain for years to come. So now that we talked about the at-home versus surgery routine and whatever you do, it's great. Do whatever works for you. I just have been really, really happy with the direction I've taken. Now, what have I put on my skin that I think has made a huge difference? If you're familiar with my channel, you're going to know that this Invisicrate Body Balm made a huge difference in the firmness in the skin on my neck. This is a big old tub. It comes from City Beauty. You can see that I love it because I'm halfway through this one. I used this on my neck for about a month. When I very first got this stuff, I wasn't really sure about it. I thought it's not going to do anything. So I took before pictures and I took after pictures. It was like, oh, my gosh, I couldn't believe the difference in the firmness of my neck. This stuff really, really does work. And I've been using it for a long, long time. They run great sales with City Beauty. So if you're interested in trying this and you have a little bit of patience or you don't need to start right now, hang on until they get a sale. I always list the sales or I try to list the sales in my Sunday morning email newsletter. If you haven't signed up, the link is in the description box down below. I try to keep you guys updated on sales on the products that I think are really worth it, and this is one. I used this for about two and a half years and was really, really happy with it. Recently, I've been using a little duo from a company called Derm Alette. This is a new product for me. I've been using it about three months now, and I'm really happy with it. It's a serum, a self-esteem beauty sleep serum. It says sleep serum. I put it on morning and evening, and also the self-esteem neck firming lift. I've been using this and I'm really, really happy with it. Do I think this might be a better solution than the Invisicrate Body Balm? It might be. It's at least as good. Now, I've been using it for a few months now. I do like the application. I like the way it feels. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to say definitively that this set is better than this because of all the other things I'm doing, particularly the weightlifting. Because I think as I continue the weightlifting and the fitness journey, my neck is just going to look better and better and better, at least in the sense of that kind of double chin look or the firmness of the muscle structure underneath my neck. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to say, oh yeah, this is so much better than this. I think right now they're probably about equal. This might be edging forward a little bit. Both of these companies offer great sales, so I'll try to keep you guys posted in the Sunday morning email newsletter if either one of these go on sale. Right now, I'm going to continue to use the product from Dermalect. I do use the Invisicrate Body Balm on the other areas of my body that I want firmer skin, particularly the wobbly bits underneath my arms. I want to wrap up with what it is I could be doing that I'm not doing. And is there something? And the answer is yes, there is. The other thing that I think really can have an impact, particularly on the smoothness and the wrinkliness of that skin on our neck is either microneedling or derma rolling. I have both of them. I have a derma roller set from Gen Amber, which I think makes the best derma rollers out there. And I have a Dr. Pin 8, which is a micro needling device. I don't use them. <laughs> And you might be wondering why. I have tried repeatedly to implement a process or a program that includes either derma rolling or microneedling, and I never stick with it. That is a personal thing. The reason I think for me is I can never stick with it is that I like to do it in the evening because I know that your body only heals at night 
while you're sleeping. So if I'm gonna do any type of needling, I'm going to do it before I go to bed. The problem for me is, is that at the end of the day, I'm done. I'm lucky if I get my evening skincare done some nights. I am just toast at the end of the day and I don't want to do anything else, particularly something that is not that pleasant, which needling for me isn't. If you are able to stick with either a derma rolling or a micro needling routine, I think you're going to see really spectacular results because it does a lot to improve the texture of your skin. I wish I could find a way to incorporate it into my routine. So far, I haven't been able to really get it rolling and have it be something that I'm going to stick with. If I come across a secret trick or a special way to do it that seems to work, I'll definitely let you guys know. So that is my long-winded explanation of what I feel has really made the difference in my neck. And again, my neck does not look great. It doesn't. If you saw me in person, you'd go, that's the neck of an older lady. It does, however, look a whole lot better than it did. And the things that I think have really made a difference are diet and anti-inflammatory diet and getting my microbiome really up to where it's serving my body. A good exercise program that includes a lot of strength training and lifting heavy, very consistent. Then onto a good red light panel. I feel like the panels are just so so much of a better value and they're much more flexible and easy to use on other parts of your body. If you have the other devices, if you have a microcurrent or a radio frequency device or an at-home laser device, you can go ahead and use those on the approved areas of your neck. That will additionally help that skin look firmer, brighter, fresher, tighter, less wrinkly. And then the creams, I use Invisicrate Body Balm and I also use the Dermalect. I like both of them. I think the Dermalect might be a little bit more effective, but again, it might just be my fitness routine. That is my takeaway from four years now of an anti-aging skincare journey. My very best suggestions, my very best tips, I don't know if I had any tricks for you today, but I hope I did. Oh yeah, the tricks are take photos. Make sure you take photos and take video as well. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll try to do a video to cover all the questions. Hope that was helpful. I try to shoot for 130 grams of protein a day. Do I ever make it? Rarely. I'm not kidding, but I keep giving it that college try. This morning, I'm going to put together my first meal of the day with a really heavy emphasis on protein. And this is a little meal that I have quite a bit. It's very high in protein, super nutritious, and it's not really heavy. One of the challenges that I have trying to get enough protein into my diet is that I just get too full. I get too full and I'm not hungry and so I'll peter out towards the end of the day because I just can't stomach any more food. I'll get better. I know I will. This is a great way to start my day because this little meal, it's going to be a shake and a dessert treat, is more than 40 grams of protein, probably closer to 45. I'm going to start with my blender filled with a combination of crushed ice and water. And I use structured water in my protein shakes. The volume of this is a little bit more than one cup. So the liquid and the ice equal a little bit more than one cup. To the blender, the first thing I'm going to add is this bone broth protein from Ancient Nutrition. One scoop is going to be equal to 20 grams of protein. Into the blender that goes. Next up is my collagen. This is a multi-collagen peptide hydrolyzed from Code Age. I really do like it. One scoop of this is nine grams of protein. Then I'm gonna go in with this peanut butter powder. Have you guys seen this? <laughs> this is like a miracle product. This is peanut butter without all the oils and fats in it. It's just powdered peanuts. Really good, very high in protein. So two tablespoons of this is eight grams of protein and it has a great flavor. I don't mind being a little generous with this because it just means more protein and more peanut butter flavor, which I really like. Next up is maca root. This is a supplement that I really like and one teaspoon of this maca root is equal to one gram of protein. This plus the peanut butter is 10 grams right there. And last up is spirulina. Spirulina is so good for us. It's wonderful for your skin. It's a great nutritional ingredient and the real 
real power of spirulina is that it actually goes through your body and collects toxins and then releases the toxins when you release the spirulina. One thing I can tell you from my research is that you want to make sure you get a really, really good spirulina because it attracts toxins. If it doesn't release from your body, those toxins are going to collect in your body. That's why a lot of times if you hear of someone who's just started spirulina and they're not feeling good, it's probably because it's not a good quality spirulina. So really make sure that you get a good one. I'll go ahead and have this one and the other stuff here linked in the description box. I really did some pretty good research. I feel pretty confident about them. So one teaspoon of spirulina and that is two grams of protein. So everything goes into the blender. So this right here is 40 grams of protein, which is huge for the day. If I could start the day with this much protein, and I'm really trying to have these shakes almost every day that I can fit it in. It really does taste delicious. It mostly tastes like peanut butter, which I love. This is gonna be my main course for my first meal of the day. Now let's hop into the tasty treat for dessert. This little dessert is one I have several times a week. It's so good, very filling, and it really does satisfy that sweet treat urge that I have mostly in the evenings, sometimes during the day. What I start out with is chia seed pudding. Now, if you've never made chia seed pudding, it's really, really easy. This is what my container of chia seed pudding looks like now. I generally make a batch every week, week and a half. The way that I do it is I get my organic chia seeds. I just picked this up from Walmart. And the cool thing about this package is that the recipe is on the back. The way that I make mine is I go ahead and use a third a cup of chia seeds, two cups of coconut milk because I'm not doing dairy right now, and then to sweeten it and flavor it, I add the Swerve brown sugar sugar substitute. This is my favorite for cooking and making ingredients for a sweetener, this line, Swerve. So I add about a third a cup of chia pudding in the bottom of my bowl, and then I add my berries. And I generally buy no, not generally, always, <laughs> by organic berries. Today I have blueberries and strawberries that I've rinsed and cut up and topped it on top of my chia seed pudding. Now here comes the little secret trick. If you know about this already, you're gonna go, uh-huh, that stuff's really good. What I'm going to top it with is something called Cocoa Whip. If you've ever had Cool Whip and you loved it, but you don't like all the chemicals in Cool Whip, you need to meet Cocoa Whip. <laughs> this is very, very similar to Cool Whip, only it's made with coconut and it doesn't have all the chemicals in it. It's a little more healthful. There are a few sugars in here, which is why I always try to have this little treat after I've had a lot of protein because you don't want to eat carbs naked. In other words, you don't want to just dump a bunch of sugar into your system. You want to make sure you have some protein for that to really soften the insulin spike that's going to happen with the little bit of sugars. Even though this does have some sugars in it, it's only 30 calories for two tablespoons and it's delicious and you just don't need very much it goes a long way here's what it looks like in the tub so I'm going to take about two tablespoonfuls and put that right on top of my berries and it comes out of the freezer and you keep it in the freezer it comes out very very hard but it softens up really, really quickly. And what's gonna happen is that in just a couple of minutes, that's going to soften up. I'm gonna mix it with my berries and my chia seed pudding. It's gonna be delicious. So this is my first meal of the day. I've got my delicious peanut butter shake and my chia pudding with berries. A nice meal, 44 grams of protein at least. And I'm gonna be very, very satisfied and happy that I got that much protein in this early in the day. I've been spending so much more time lately since I moved here to Central Florida focusing on the skin on my body for good reason because I'm showing so much more of it now than I ever have since I was a little kid. I wear shorts just about every day. I'm in a bathing suit 
almost every day. In other words, the skin on my body has become more of a focus for me. So I wanted to share with you what I'm doing to keep my skin really hydrated, really smooth, really moisturized, which, you know, can be a challenge. Even though my environment is very, very humid, I still really focus on making sure that my skin is super, super moisturized. The first thing that I've been using, and you're going to laugh at this, this is a huge jar of organic coconut oil that I got at Walmart in the grocery section. I'm not kidding, this used to be in my kitchen, but I know coconut oil is so good for your skin. I hauled it out of the kitchen, it now lives in my bathroom, and I slather myself in this organic coconut oil head to toe. Well, not my head, I start down kind of here. <laughs> you know, in my chest area, all the way down to the tops of my feet. Now, coconut oil is really, really hydrating. It's really good for your skin. It, however, is a little bit greasy or it sits on top of your skin when you apply it. I have just learned to work around that. In other words, if I'm going to go sit on the couch right after I put it on, I make sure that I put something down so that oil doesn't get into the upholstery. I have not found anything as hydrating and moisturizing and long lasting as this on my skin and it's super cheap. It's really, really very, very affordable, easy to apply, easy to find, just a great addition to my all over skincare routine. If you haven't tried coconut oil on your skin before, give it a whirl. I think you're going to like it. It's super hydrating, long lasting, and even the next day after I've applied this all over, you know, the day before, my skin feels really, really soft and supple. So this is kind of my little secret weapon, very affordable, very easy to use, and really, really moisturizing. The second lotion I want to talk about is this Chaga Skin Cream from Birch Boy. This is not new, and Garrett, the owner of Chaga, had sent this to me a while ago, and I never ended up using it just because, I don't know, I just didn't end up fitting it into my routine. He sent me another bottle recently, about a month and a half ago, and oh my God, I really like this. It has a great formulation. It sits on the skin really, really nicely. And it has that chaga ingredient, which has some great properties if your skin is irritated. In other words, if you have a sunburn, if you have any kind of topical issue on your skin, you might want to give this chaga skin cream a try because there really are beneficial properties in this that are going to help support your healthy skin. I use this from time to time throughout the week, depending on what my mood is. It's just a nice cream. And if you're watching this in July of 2023, Birch Boys is the boss event for this month. And there's a great special on this Chaga skincare cream. One thing that you could consider doing is grabbing a bottle and keeping it aside if you ever have a need. If someone in your family has a big sunburn or if there's some kind of rash or issue along, this is a good little medicinal kind of application of something really healthy for your skin to help soothe that issue. And then the last thing I want to talk about is this kind of cool little product from a company called Verst. Are you familiar with Verst? If you're not, I think it's a fairly new skincare company, super affordable, super clean, really interesting range of product. Now they sent me a selection of the skincare products, which I used for about a week. You know, they're nice. It wasn't to the point that I thought, oh my gosh, I want to talk about this, but they're nice and they're very, very affordable and very clean. If you're interested, you can check them out. This product in particular, I think is unique. This is their gentle retinol body lotion. So this body lotion has retinol in it. We all know that retinol or a derivative of vitamin A really does help with skin turnover. I've been using this about two weeks now. I ended up getting two tubes. It's very affordable and I like it. It's a nice lotion. The next question you might have is, well, how much retinol is actually in here? I I don't really know. It is about third of the way down in the ingredient list. So how much retinol is it really going to take to impact the skin on your body? I don't know the answer to that. And because I just started using this, I can't say that it's done miraculous things for my skin, but I do like 
that they have a skin cream with retinol in it. I think that's a very, very cool idea. The line itself is super clean, no sulfates, no phthalates, you know, that whole thing, no endocrine disruptors. Nice ingredient list in this lotion, and it's super affordable. I just purchased mine off of Amazon, and I'll have all these listed down below for you. So the Verse Press Restart is the name Gentle Retinol Body Lotion. If you're looking for something that's really going to help the skin cells turn over on your body, this is an interesting choice. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found this video fun, useful, and helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I had a really good time this week sharing what's new in my life and the fun things that I found with you. You guys know it just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 and over 60 women. Make it a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.